Loving Father, we give you praise tonight, God, and thank you for this opportunity, Lord, and for knowledge, God. Allow us to be in your house once again. We ask you to have your way in this Bible study, Lord. Uh, help us to have receptive hearts. And God, we pray that you bless our performer. Help him to teach that which he has laid upon his heart. And God, we ask all these things in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in Bible study this evening. Um, we're continuing still with the character study of Abraham. Last week we dealt with how that his nephew Lot was taken captive, and Abraham and a few and a couple of his men went out and recovered him and won a great victory. On the way back, he met this king, King Melchizedek, which is the king of Salem. Um, we know from the book of Hebrews, Melchizedek, Melchizedek is a theophany or a pre-appearing of Jesus Christ in the Old Testament. Hebrews declare that he was without father, without mother. He was without beginning of days nor the end of life. He, had, um, he was made like unto the Son of God, and we know that to be Jesus Christ. So after meeting this king, we find that Abraham paid tithe or gave a tenth of all that he had unto him. It's important for us today still to pay our tithe and give an offering as unto the Lord. Moving right along. Last week we were in Genesis chapter 16, how that... God had already promised Abraham how that there will be an heir from him and Sarah. But they decided to rush with this plan. And they came up with their own carnal plan. How that he used Hagar, a concubine, to be a surrogate mother to, for, uh, for a child heir. And we know what happened. Verse 6. Genesis 16, verse 6. But Abram said unto Sarah, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. To do to her as it pleases thee. And when Sarah dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. We find that Hagar fled from her mistress' face. The birth of Ishmael, the birth of Ishmael will be Genesis 16, verses 7 through 11. And the angel of, of the Lord found her by a fount, fountain of water in the wilderness, by the fountain in the way to Shur. And he said, Hagar, Sarah's maid, whence comest thou, and whither wilt thou go? And she said, I flee from the face of my mistress, Sarah. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Return to thy mistress, and submit thyself under her hands. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, I will multiply thy seed exceedingly, that it shall not be numbered for multitude. And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shall bear a son, and shall call his name Ishmael, because the Lord has heard thy affliction. And he will be a wild man, his hand will be against every man, and every man's hand against him. And he shall dwell in the presence of all his brethren. And she called the name of the Lord that spoke unto her, Thou God, Seest me, for she said, Have I also here looked after him that seeth me? Wherefore the well was, was called Berhalaloi, behold, it is between Kadesh and Bered. And Hagar bare Abram a son, and Abram called his son's name, which Hagar bare Ishmael. And Abram was fourscore and six years old when Hagar bare Ishmael to Abram. We see how God had dealt with Hagar to return and submit uh, herself to Sarai. And along with that, God told her also of this blessing that he would uh, bless upon his son of his uh, seed that would come through. You see, in the midst of our mess ups, in the midst of our downfall, God still would bless. God still would be merciful and be gracious. And it's it's like that today still, and we could still call upon the name of our God. And there truly is no other God like our God. Who else would put up with us over and over and over again, pick us back up over and over and over again? Truly none but our God. 
And this was a real, really a terrible karma mistake, but it happened. Now they have to move on, move on with their life. Chapter 17, Genesis 17. We find a very special uh, covenant between God and Abraham. The covenant of circumcision. The covenant of circumcision. Verse 1. And when Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. You see, from verse uh, the last verse of the previous chapter, chapter 16, verse 16, it said that Abraham was four scores and six years old. That was 86 years old. Now he is 99. So from chapter 16 to verse to uh, chapter 17, that was 13 years. Abraham, Abraham is now 99 years old, getting older, getting up there in age. And I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face, and God talked with him, saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name be, neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And really, Abram, uh, his first and previous name, Abram, means exalted father, and Abraham means uh, father of multitude or chief. Of multitude. And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will and I will make nations of these, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, and their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land where, wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations. You see, God had deliberately restrained Sarai from conceiving an heir, but the only way for this to happen, you see, Abraham was already up there in his age, 99 years old. They were well past the age of uh, conception, and God deliberate, uh, had done this close Sarah's womb. Why? To show them that the only way for this to happen is for God to allow it himself. And truly, nothing is impossible with our God tonight. There was supposed to be a distinct uh, difference between the son of flesh, we know to be Ishmael, and the son of promise, which is going to eventually be Isaac. Somebody in Abraham's household would eventually be the next patriarch, and God wanted it to be distinctly uh, his heir from Sarai and Abraham. He didn't want uh, Ishmael to be the next heir. In line. So the circumcision covenant, verses 10 through 14. God said this, This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me, me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall be circumcised the flesh, ye shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight years Eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations, he that is born in the house or brought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of his foreskin is not circumcised, that so shall be cut off from his people, he hath broken my covenant. Here was a very uh, special, it was a very unique covenant between God and Abraham and his seed. This was something that all the other nations around didn't practice. This was um, specifically for the Hebrews or the Jews. They were made distinctly, uh, distinctly and physically different. All the adults had to undertake this procedure uh, along with all the male child, uh, eight days of age or older, and later this would become a part of their law. And once more, we don't find Abraham complaining. We don't 
uh, find Abraham wondering why God, why do I have to do this? Abraham simply obeyed. Just like the, in the very beginning where God called him, get out of your own country and go to this land I will show you. He didn't know where he was going and here is the very same thing. He may not have completely understood what God would have for him, but he was obedient unto the Lord. And that has to be the same way with us tonight. We don't need to question God all the ins and outs of everything. We don't have to understand everything. It's up to us to be obedient. And this is how God blesses us. God blesses our obedience. And that same day, what happened? Abraham and all the males in his household uh, were circumcised. We find later on, Sarah's name would change also. Verse 15. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarah, thy wife, thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall her name be. And the name Sarah means princess. Now Sarah means noble woman. Moving right along. Moving right along to Genesis 18. Here we find Sarah's and Abraham's faith tested. Sarah's and Abraham's faith tested. And verses 1 through 10, we see how that God came down and met with Abraham. And I'll begin in verse 11 in this chapter. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I am wax old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, be old also? And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I be of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And she said, Nay, but thou didst laugh. Abraham, once again, 99, was 99 years old when he was circumcised. Here at this time, he was probably 100 or close to it, to the human mind, having a child really would be impossible. But thank God, with God, all things are possible. And God posed this question, is there anything too hard for the Lord? He clearly told her, at the appointed time, ye shall conceive a seed. So that was verses 8 through 15. Sarah laughs within herself. Sarah laughs within herself. In verses 16 through 32, we find the fate of Sodom and Gomorrah. The fate of Sodom and Gomorrah. God had made known to Abraham the pending judgment of these cities, and Abraham once again acted as an intercessor. Abraham would plead upon, uh, the, upon his nephew, really, Lot. We know that Lot would, is currently dwelling in the city of Sodom, and Abraham acted as an intercessor uh, on his behalf. And he talked the Lord all the way down from, he said, what, well, Lord, if there's be 50 righteous men in, this, in these cities, do not destroy it. And God said, okay. And he taught all the way, he went all the way from 50 righteous to only 10. To 10, uh, 10 righteous people. And for 10 righteous people's sake, God would not destroy these cities. But we know that to not be the case. The cities were destroyed. But, however, Lot was given this opportunity to escape. Why? As a courtesy to Abraham. And like I, I shared last week, we all need to individually have our own personal relationship and our own walk with God. Yes, somebody can pray for you. Of course, uh, blessings will come your way no, and God's hand will be upon you. But one of these days, we all have to give an account for our own lives. We have to stand before the Lord ourselves and give an account for the things that we have done. And here, uh, yes, we find that God was uh, merciful to Abraham, or to Lot, really, and to Abraham, of course, but God was only merciful to Lot because of Abraham. And we cannot live in this uh, life living uh, on somebody else's prayers in that sense. Of course, we need each other to pray for you, but we need to have our own personal walk with God ourselves. 
Now, when we stand before the Lord, of course, we want to hear our good and faithful servant come in, into the joy of the Lord. And we have to give an account for our own lives. We have to uh, live according to God's word. But thank God there are people out there praying for us tonight. Chapter 19. We find the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. The destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. The angels visit. Verses 1 through 15. The angels visit. And there came two angels to Sodom at even, and Lot sat in the gate of Sodom, or the center, if you will, of the city. And Lot, seeing them, rose up to meet them, and he bowed himself with his face toward the ground. And he said, Behold now, my lords, turn in, I pray you, into your servant's house, and tarry all night, and wash your feet. And he shall rise up early and go on your ways. And they said, Nay, but we will abide in the street all night. And he pressed upon them greatly, and they turned in unto him, and entered into his house, and he made them a feast, and did bake unleavened bread, and they did eat. But before they lay down, the men of the city, even the men of Sodom, compassed the house round about, both old and young, all the people from every quarter. And they called unto Lot and said unto him, Where are the men which came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. No, they didn't really care for what their names were. They didn't really care what that business it was. They wanted to be what these men, they wanted to be with these angels. They wanted to sleep with these, uh, with, uh, with these angels. They were wicked, they were evil within their heart. And verse, um, verse four, it said, men from what? Come pass around the house, round about, both old and young, all the people from every quarter, all the men of the city, from uh, ever, all the corners of the city were like that. No wonder there weren't 10 righteous among them. And God, it was, uh, it was righteous for God to destroy that city. And then what happened? And Lot went out the door, went out at the door unto them and shut the door after him. And they said, I pray you, brethren, do not so wickedly. Behold, now I have two daughters which have not known them. Let me, I pray you, bring them out unto you. And do ye to them as it is good in your eyes. Man, the father was selling out his daughter just like that. That was wicked. That was evil. Only unto these men do nothing. For therefore came they under the shadow of my roof. And they said, stand back. And they said again, this one fellow came in to sojourn, and he will needs be judged. Now will we de uh, deal worse with thee than with them? And they pressed sore upon the men even Lot and came near to break the door. But the men put forth their hand and pulled Lot into the house to them and shut the door. And they smote the men that were, that were at the door of the house with blindness, both small and great, so that they wearied themselves to find the door. That was how wicked these, uh, these men about, these, uh, about Lot's house were. They, even though the angels smote them with blindness, they still wanted to come in to the house. They were still trying to find that door. No wonder God pronounced judgment upon these two cities. The, people, uh, the people's wickedness, the people's sin were great. So we find later Lot flees. That would be verses 19 or 16 through 29. And this is where we find that Lot's wife uh, would eventually look back and became a pillar of salt. And Jesus would make mention of this in Luke chapter 17. He said, remember Lot's wife. She looked back and became a pillar of salt. They wanted to linger. Their hearts were still in, uh, towards the city of sin. And we know that his... Uh, the son-in-law that these two girls married were, uh, they didn't want to come. The angels literally had to drag uh, Lot, his wife, and his two daughters out from the city. They still wanted to linger. They still wanted to be in this wicked city. So they had a, the angel of the Lord drag them out. Verses 30 through 38, we find 
we find the sin of Lot. The sin of Lot. How that Lot's daughters to raise up there would eventually make their fathers be drunken with wine and they would sleep with their own father. And out of uh, out of this wicked act, what, what happened? The birth of the Moabites and the Ammonites came about and they would constantly be at odds with Isaac's descendants. And that was really wicked. A uh, not Abraham. Lot knew exactly what happened. Lot knew exactly what happened. Even though Abraham prayed to the Lord, say, God, be merciful, spare my nephew Lot. We see Lot still continuing on this downward spiral, doing things more and more wicked. His heart was never truly right with the Lord. Genesis 20. Genesis 20, we see that Abraham deceives Abimelech. Abraham deceives Abimelech. And here again, we find, find that Abraham did the same thing, how he was deceptive to Pharaoh in Egypt. He called Sarah his sister once again. And as he was journeying, he met this Abimelech, and Abimelech took Sarah to, into his house, so to speak, and God made known, made it clear, very clear to Abimelech that this was not uh, his, was not Abraham's sister, but indeed his wife. And he told, uh, God told Ab uh, Abimelech to return Sarah unto uh, Abraham. And yes, once again, we see the mercies, we see the grace, we see the goodness of our God. We may make the same mistakes, royal mistakes, even over and over and over again. And God will still have his hand of protection upon us. And he could have well easily said, you know what, Abraham, this is the second time you messed up. You blew it. So I'll let you suffer the consequences. But no, God was still merciful. God was still a protective. God still had his hand upon Abraham and Sarah's lives. And truly, our God is so good to us. Our God is so wonderful to us tonight. He is so long-suffering. He is so patient with us each and every day. And truly, uh, the only way we won't be able to make it to his kingdom is if we continue to do our own thing, continue to say no to God, continue to go outside of his will. God has made every way possible for us to make it into his kingdom tonight. He is so good. He is so patient. It's up to us to seize those opportunities. It's up to us to follow the footsteps of Almighty God. So this is the chapter where we've been all waiting for, chapter 21. Chapter 21 is the birth of Isaac. The birth of Isaac. Verse 1. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. For Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, who Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old, and his son Isaac was born Unto him. That is old, a hundred years old when Isaac was born. And Sarah said, God has made me to laugh so that all that all that here will laugh with me. And she said, Who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah would have should have given children stuff? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned, and Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. And later on, we would find it wouldn't be long for sibling uh, rivalry to come about because Ishmael is still in the picture, and he is much older, uh, probably a teenager by this time, and we would find a, um, a turmoil of rivalry, sibling uh, rivalry between these two. But the younger Isaac would still be preferred over the older Ishmael. That was the promise fulfilled, verses 1 through 8. The promise fulfilled, verses 1 through 8. Verses 9 through 21, Hagar and Ishmael sent away. Hagar and Ishmael sent away. And Sarah, Sarah saw the son of Hagar, the Egyptian, which she had born unto Abraham, mocking. 
Wherefore she said unto Abraham, Cast out this bondwoman and her son, for the son of this bondwoman shall not be an heir with my son, even with Isaac. And the thing was very grievous in Abraham's sight because of his son. Sarah saw what? Saw Ishmael mocking Isaac. And she went to Abraham like she did the first time. Um, this time Abraham had obviously had a more emotional bond, a, more of a connection with Ishmael. They've grown uh, together all these number of years. And there was a connection there. There was a father and son uh, connection there. But now... Uh, it's time to put them away. It's time to put them away. Verse 12. And God said unto Abraham, Let it not be grievous in thy sight because of the light and because of thy bondwoman. And all that Sarah has said unto thee, hearken unto her voice. For in Isaac shall thy seed be called. And God re, uh, reiterates again, it's not through Ishmael where the promise would come through. It will be through Isaac. And, don't, and God was telling Abraham, don't be grievous. Again, do what uh, Sarah told you to do. Send this woman, send Hagar and Ishmael away. And why is that important now? Why was that necessary now at this time? Because remember back in this time and still many uh, cultures today, the patriarch is supposed to be the head of the house or the oldest male would be the head of the house. So eventually Abraham, as he passed on and as he died, he would leave everything behind to the eldest heir. And who is the eldest heir at this time? It would be Ishmael. But God wanted this man out of the picture and everything would eventually uh, go on to Isaac. He was supposed to be the next patriarch. And what happened? Abraham complied to appease Sarah and Really, in order to make uh, God happy. And all of this could have been avoided in the first place. You see what happens when we do things out, outside of God's will? You see what happens when we do things uh, on our own? We make mistakes. And sometimes, in this case, it's a very terrible mistake. And no wonder it may be heartbreaking and hard and all these different things. But those are the mistakes we have to live with. Sometimes there are just certain mistakes we can't go back and fix. They happen. And now we have to move on. We have to continue to pray and move on and allow God to help us. So it's important for us to do things what? God's way. God's way has never failed. God's way always works. And if we do it God's way, it will always work every time. So instead of trying to do things our own way, do it God's way. Let it work the first time. Do it right the first time. And, you, and it will avoid a lot of headaches and pains and all these different things. So we'll stop right there and pick it back up next week. We should finish uh, the character study of Abraham next week. So once again, we see the mercies and we see the goodness of our God, um, our God still to us tonight. How many times we messed up, how many times we have failed God, yet he would still have his hand of protection upon us. We serve truly the good and the mighty God tonight. So let's close with prayer. It's my uh, desire and blessing that whoever's watching out there, this is a blessing to you and you learned something from this tonight. So let's close with prayer. Father, we thank you tonight for this Bible study. We ask that you Take the things that we'll share, Lord, and hide it in our hearts, Lord. We hope that you we hope that you help us, oh God, to grow in the grace and the knowledge of you, oh God. Continue to be with us, oh God, and bring us back in the next appointed time to worship and to praise you. In Christ's name we pray and ask. Amen.